Okay, agenda for today. Any demo from anyone? Zoltan? Sorry, no. <laughs> no? But I have a suggestion to uh, to incorporate the pull requests content in, into the main source. Okay. <clears throat> uh, that pull request was created by Eric. Because as you may know, the, in the latest source, um, yeah. Razor IntelliSense is completely broken. And he fixed that. Yep. I have a pull request. Tack. Um, okay, okay, so st status and of 1.8, well, 1.8, status, uh, triage, uh, status, we'll talk about this thing, uh, new websites, status on the website work that, that, no one here did because Chris is not here. Let me check on Jabber quick. Chris is not like being in Chris. What he says, um. We'll talk about this thing. Who wants to talk about something? Um. Okay. Well, Stanley Stanley pushed some pull requests to me for onestop.sel, so I look forward to looking at those. That's the first time someone not directly affiliated with one stop has submitted a pull request so Stanley thank you no problem it's nothing crazy okay <laughs> okay um, so status let me share my screen what has been done last week uh, desktop so blink Benedict No blinking. C'est bon? OK. Good, good, good. Um, so status, websites for later. Uh, git. Come here, git. Git history. Short history, but not so short because some of you did something. Um, so this one, so yes, yeah, Sipke on it was on Thursday, I think, Wednesday, Tuesday. Don't remember, he fixed the um, so this issue I had fixed on 17x, so it's in 172. It was about having a HTTP, oh sorry, having a base URL when you are in a background task. And Zoltan had, uh, had raised the issue that when you're in a background task or a workflow background task, something, or even on a workflow actually, yeah, you will not have access to the base URL, which means all your links will be relative or based on localhost with stuff like this. So this was a fix, but the fix was bad. Okay, It was doing some queries like this, select base URL from table name, because the the, re the dependency resolution was failing during those background tasks at this point. And um, when I did the shift, I removed this bad code, hoping it will fix everything, but it didn't. So Sipke found the issue and fixed it by resolving a funk of string. So it will actually delay the resolution of the service. And uh, it works. Oh, he said it works, so we trust him. So now it's... Uh, it's nicer. So he fixed this, this thing. Um, then Bertrand did something, made admin pages print pretty. Menu is removed, and also I assume for, uh, yes, media print, okay. Um, then I fixed some thread static usage. I know it was bad, but uh, I didn't have time to fix that 
this time, so I fixed it uh, right after. Um, so the idea is that is that the the processing engine, which is supposed to execute delayed tasks, so when you're inside a request, a work context, you can schedule tasks for the end of the request like cleaning stuff or doing stuff when the request is done, when every, when every module has done something, for instance, like restarting a tenant. Um, it was not thread, it was not, um, how do you say that? Uh, the affinity was not linked to threads and it was an issue because you could have another thread trigger the task, even though the main HTTP thread will not have finished. So the purpose of, of delaying the task to the end of the request was broken. So now it's fixed, it's using a different way of um, keeping this affinity and it works nicely. It's also necessary if you want to do more multi-thread things with tenants. So I need that and it works fine. Um, adding a logging workflow activity. So Bertrand created a new activity, the logging activity, so you can add custom logs during a workflow. Okay. Didn't try it, but it's pretty simple to understand. Um, I'm not sure you know you didn't add some logs technically to the to the workflows. I don't see that. So, but it's, yeah. it could also be necessary, no, like. like Okay, um, removed unused tokenizer. Okay. Um, this is a fix from Sipke to actually load um, the latest version of a media instead of just a published ones. This way you can have your custom media type which is draftable and it will show the latest versions on the UI with the thumbnails and you can then publish or publish later your media items. It's, uh, it's good, it was necessary for some customers so and it's not breaking so it's okay. You will do some other little changes uh, for the UI. Um, and what did I do last week? Uh, not so much, uh, I had lots of meetings and uh, there were, there were some conferences in, in Microsoft that I had to attend and um, I worked mostly on, the, on for a customer who, which is trying to, to create lots of tenants. Um, so right now the state of this performance and tenant work is that I can, I was able to run 1000 on a single machine on Azure with a single database on Azure. So this opens up lots of possibilities and um, also I optimize the loading of the tenants. So now it's done in parallel. So if you have multiple tenants, they will be loaded in parallel. And depending on, depending on how many cores you have on your machine, it will speed up by two, three or four times the, the, the startup time. Um, and uh, it made me realize that there are some concurrency issues in some other um, systems in Orchard. For instance, this one. So this is a, a short fix that I have to improve because it's not fixing everything. So the shell descriptor cache is just a file. Um, let me show you. Chart web. In the app data, there is a file called cache.date. Cache sorry. Um, this file is like this, you see, when you have lots of tenants, for each tenant, uh, you have the, the, the names of the features which are enabled. So the idea is when it's loading Orchard the first time, instead of looking into all the tables and doing lots of lazy loads to load all the currently enabled features, it's looking at this file, so it's very easy. But this file is on the file system and if you have multiple tenants, they will try to read it or to update it um, concurrently and this could prevent your um, tenants to load. Even if you have just one tenant, if you have two instances reading the same file, 
it will fail. And this is the case with Azure Media websites because on Azure Media websites, the file system is shared. So this could be an issue. So my current uh, workaround is to put a lock simply on this one, which will prevent multiple tenants from failing. If you have only one instance, there is still an issue with uh, multiple instances. So the next step is to add a, a file lock mechanism like we have for the indexes. So this is the same implementation. I just need to use this implementation. and. Another step is to actually use on Azure Cloud Services to use a custom implementation like we have for the site settings uh, or for the settings file. We need also a, a way to cache that if we really want to cache it uh, on Azure. So, yeah. And there might also be some issues with the mapping files, actually, this file, if you run on Azure websites. I'm currently writing a, a blog post about those Azure website issues uh, because when you develop for um, a farm, it, you have to take that into to take that into account. Like if you have shared, you, you need shared um, resources. So on the cloud service. On cloud services, which is where Orchard used to work um, since day one, the, you don't have an issue because it, the all the instances have their own file system. So the issue is that, okay, if you need to share some data, you need to use a blob storage or the database. Okay, but with Azure Media Services, there is a new issue, which is you share the file system. So you might have, so everything you thought would work on the file system actually doesn't work because if you have different instances, there might be some concurrency issues with the files. So this is another farm issue. It's a farm issue, but this time the file system is shared. So there are yeah. three, yeah, sorry. Is the, is the app data folder also shared? So yes, everything. <laughs> Oh, okay. On Azure Media Services, the file system, the file system is shared by all instances. So if you take the slide and put to two or three instances on the scale tab, then they will all use the same file system. This is an issue for some of them, like the mappings. So everything we write on the app data folder will be an issue. So this one, the cache, the that. So even if you use Azure websites, there are not so many people who use um, at least two instances of your Azure on, on the Azure websites uh, because it's powerful enough usually. Uh, but there are some users who do that, so there could be an issue. Uh, so we have to fix it. When Seb says Azure Media Services, it means oh, I, I, I said Azure Media Services. Sorry, Azure websites. Yeah, this is because of you. Uh, we. <laughs> because of the meeting we had just before. Um, so Azure websites, Azure websites. So the issue is with Azure websites, okay? Uh, but I will fix it. So it needs two different implementation, one which is file system safe, concurrency on file system safe, and another one for Azure, I assume. Yeah, it's a cache, but yeah. for Azure it will work. The only issue will be that if two users enable or disable some features on two different cloud service instances on Azure in production, which is not supposed to be supported. So this will not be an issue with uh, Azure cloud services. It, this will be an issue, with, an issue with Azure websites. So yeah, I, I have to fix that. SMS, AMS, everything. Uh, Uh, yes, exactly. So on, on Azure websites, the people who use um, different instances, well, uh, Sean, I don't know what you're talking about, but I think it's wrong. So if you say our customers SLI require this reliability, this is wrong. Because if you increase the number of instances on Azure websites, those instances same data center. And if a VM goes down, if a website goes down, it means the data center goes down, something in the data center goes down. So if you really want the SLA, you actually will need one instance on one data center and another instance on another one data center, which means they will have different um, file systems. 
and they are completely separate um, applications. They could use the same database, but uh, yeah, which is a centered and this is a question. So you, the SLA is important for Azure when you run cloud services because they require you to have two instances, but for your customers, you would rather use two different data centers. And then there is no issue at all, actually. Um, is it clear? Sean's typing. Hey, Sebastian. Uh, this is Sean. Yeah, you know, it, it's interesting you mentioned that. The reason why two servers is typically required um, for cloud services is because of the fault domains. So if they're applying a patch to the server, uh, what happens is you need to have two servers so that mm -hmm. they can take one down and the other stays yes. up. So I, I'm not sure what your thoughts are there. But this is for cloud services. And in this case, there is no issue. Orchard supports it totally, and there is no technical issue with the current implementation. Because each of the instances on cloud services will have their own file system. There's no concurrency issue possible. Got it. OK. The issue is when you have Azure websites. And in Azure websites, having two instances, they don't care about the SLA. The SLA is the same for Azure websites, if you have one or two instances. But for your customer, if you want to have a good SLA, you need one website instance in one data center and another website instance in the other one. Well, you, it's, it's still relevant with the cloud services. You might have two instances in one data center and two in another data center. Because if one data center goes down, there is still another one which uh, takes the relay. That's very helpful. OK, thank you. And uh, with Asia Traffic Manager, if you enable that, if you have two data centers, it will automatically handle that. So if one data center goes down, all the traffic will be uh, forwarded to the other data center. In case you have that. So that's how people... I appreciate do. this. OK, thank you for this. And uh, yes, Stanley is using Azure Traffic Manager. Stanley, so explain us your, uh, your setup. Um, well, we have two for each. 11 of our Orchard websites, we're running them as extra smalls and Azure web roles. Um, and we have two Nginx web servers, one configured in East US, one configured in Eastern Europe. Um, and we've, we've configured them as reverse proxy caches. So they actually cache our traffic and handle our public requests as opposed to uh, Orchard handling it. And we've recently started experimenting with Google PageSpeed module, um, which does rewriting of your HTML output, combining of your JavaScript and CSS. Um, rather cool stuff. Um, so in the end, you are actually doing what Akamai is doing, OK, by replicating the Nginx instances in different um, data centers over the world. The difference of price is that, I don't know for Akama, I have, a, I have an ID. Uh, an, Nginx in, an Nginx instance, I've, do you run it on a small, small instance, medium? We're running mediums, but we can okay. probably get away with smalls. OK, let's say small, because I try with small, it's perfectly like thousands of requests per second on a small instance. Small instance is $60 per month. <laughs> if you take it. <laughs> Okay. If you take it in the US, one in the Middle East, one in Europe, you have three or four instances, and you can reach all users in uh, on the world, on the globe, and they will have kind of like uh, local uh, traffic. So if you can't afford Akamai, you can do your own Akamai by using Nginx and different uh, um, instances like this. So that's what they are doing. They have one in the US. They have two in the US, I think. You have in, in East Coast, no? One? But yours, OK. One in US, it's, one in Eastern Europe. Yeah, so one US and one Europe. So, And with Traffic Manager, it will um, it will, um, how do you say that? Which uh, one? I don't have the French one either, so. Route. Uh, route. It will route the, the traffic on the closest uh, uh, server, based on where you are in the, on the globe. That's a very nice uh, scenario. We need more blog posts for this. Ask uh, Benjamin. Um, OK. So yeah, this is just about concurrency and uh, how to handle um, um, geolocalized content like this. Um, OK, next uh, 
Any question about concurrency or uh, the setup? Right, right, you need to try it. And you can also do A-B testing. Benjamin did a, yeah, uh, uh, a blog post about that. Because with Nginx, you can just say, oh, if you, OK, 50% of the traffic goes there, and 50 others goes there, and done. Um, yes, uh, but yeah, uh, Benjamin wrote a blog post about that. Uh, Stanley just published a link here. Um, no question? OK, next. So for 1.8, we are in good shape. Um, let me look at the roadmap, what we need. Uh, so I updated this page. So the 1.7x is no more there for the roadmap. We just focus on 1.8. Um, so migration to Microsoft and at 4.5. Uh, I will go to edit. What? There's an issue with those. I don't know why, but so if I go there, feature hold map. I will update it live. So on track, um, almost done, because I just need to pull Eric's changes. Uh, uh, the last one, uh, I have upgraded to, oh, sorry. This one is, yeah, let's say done. And this one is almost done. Sebastian, I don't know if you want to add it to the roadmap, but I've started working on the non-Gregorian calendar support that we discussed also. And good, I think that good. might make it to 1.8. So yeah, um, let me explain that. Uh, in 1.7, we introduced an improved localization for um, date times. Um, and it's supported by uh, the localization file. And also time zones. OK, it's and time zones nicely, localization for late end times. The issue is that we are using the Gregorian uh, calendar. And lots of users want another calendar. And this is not supported today in our channel. So what we need is a way like we have for the time zone, a way in the settings to select the calendar you want to use. OK? Um, And the idea is that when a date and time is displayed, or when you enter it, it will use this calendar. Um, so what did we decide, Daniel, to do? Uh, so we decided. Well, what did we decide that you will do? <laughs> you said you had a design mapped out for yes. being able to select a specific calendar in the settings. But I suggested that what most people actually need, and which might be a much quicker fix, is that to have a checkbox in the settings to enable you to just specify that the, the default calendar for the selected culture would be used. So that's what I'm implementing. Yes. So there will, so, there'll, there'll be a checkbox, and the, it'll be something like, all, when displaying times and dates, use the default calendar for the configured culture. And if you check that box, that's going to introduce the change. If you don't check it, it'll work just like it does today with all Gregorian. Mm -hmm. And if you check it, it will still work like today, because if you use a, the ENUS, which is a default, it will use a Gregorian calendar. Correct. Um, and this is a non-breaking change. And even if we have to upgrade to a way to let user choose which calendar they want, it won't break either. Nope. Because yeah, because we expect ENUS cultures to use a Gregorian. I don't know why they would want to use another one if they if they use ENUS. And if they use, I I have no example. Um, I know Arabic languages have another um, calendar by default. Yeah, so it should work. Where where is your where is your customer? Uh, this was just something that somebody suggested in the forum. Okay. So I figured so have no, you have nothing to do, so let's do it. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
good. Uh, so this one is done. This one is almost done. I upgraded to Web API 2, I think, last week. And this one, SPNet MVC 5. This won't do it in 1.8. Um, uh, did I? No, I, I'm afraid I will put it in a separate task with because integrate Owen with where and the identity. Because if some technical issue, I have to check that. So I have a branch for Win middleware. Identity is dependent on this branch, but lots of unit tests don't pass anymore. I have to check why. So, okay, uh, search support. It's done actually in one seven X. This is done also in one. I'm not sure. Did I do it in one seven? Is it in one seven two the search report and the custom media types? I think so. Okay. Um, is that the is that the admin media search? <coughs> yes. Yeah, I saw that in one seven two. Okay. Well, you saw it working. I did it. I I wrote it in the, in the release notes. I think it's yeah yeah I think it's there. So it's, okay. it's, a it's a feature, right? Yeah. Yeah, and what we just need is media updates. So the the work that um, um, is it Jeff? No, it's not Jeff. Ah, I feel so dumb. Uh, well. Someone did. Ah, oh, I can't remember. Man, I'm so I'm so young. In people, um, Jeff. Yes, I. Yeah. Okay. I. I didn't. I. It's Jeff. It are just two Jeff, and I was afraid of. Uh, yeah, mixing the names. So it's Jeff. Ormstead who started the, who had a pull request for that and did the, the work. And I use also it, it works to actually do the custom media types. Um, yeah, so the idea is that with, by doing that, when you edit a media, you can change the, the binary file without altering the content item itself. That this is the idea. Oh, I just want to use another image file for this content item. And I don't want to reimport it and to lose all my uh, content item metadata. Um, yes, okay. Um, then, then, then. So this one is almost done. I think everything is done actually. Web API 2, Razor 3. This one should be done. Uh, put back the list module. In, uh, this is a pull request. So the list module, performance improvements. Uh, Yes, this, and we also have a multi, multi tenancy movements. Um, um, this and this, do I, am I missing anything? Uh, workflow module from um, Piotr. Do I miss anything for 1.8? Calendar support. Why didn't you tell me? And our support. Uh, okay. And anything that anyone can contribute to. Um, commit changes. Oh yeah, templates. Where is that? Uh, oh, actually, I will, I will call it the messaging. Uh, okay, messaging module and template module. Uh, I, I don't know where it, it, it states today. Uh, I think I have a pull request. So uh, messaging module and also templates module. Template stuff is that the is that Birchins module? Oh, <laughs> missed so many uh, <laughs> meetings. Uh, 
so the templates module is a way to create custom uh, text templates oh, okay. like okay. email templates or uh, well it actually creates shapes and stores them in the database okay. and there is a token to render a shape inside a tokenized item like an email body so you can say in the email body please render the template named foo which is actually a shape but in the in the interface the user interface we call it a template okay cool they are just dynamic administrative uh, dashboard based shapes let's say cool. a messaging module a messaging module is uh, about having a, a, a queue of messages that uh, work um, back on Back okay. on task will process. Um, I think that's it. I'm missing anything else. Uh, template to get all parts of a content type. The, all the stuff I talked about yesterday. So this uh, this is an idea. Let's talk about that. Um, and Zoltan will make it. Uh, uh, so what Zoltan, are we talking let, about? Let, let me explain you. Um, very interesting uh, and half of the code is well let's say 90% of the code is already already written so you just have to copy paste it by the way uh, you forked my module nice I just want to know what you will do with that um, uh, just for the for <laughs> 5 and official bundle 8 compatibility I've, I've done this already okay, um, Good business caching modules. Okay, let's do it. Also. Uh, so the idea is that uh, Dustin uh, came. Well, is Dustin your first name, Dustin? Because you have two first names. Oh yes, because Michael's. Okay, Dustin is your first name. Um, had some select and plus one issues yesterday, and uh, so I, I, I talked about an idea I had uh, for a long time. The the idea is that you know how output caching is working. If you don't, let me remind you the details. When a request hits Orchard, it will save the HTML which is read into memory. And when the same request hits again, oh, let's not run the full Orchard pipeline, let's render the, the page directly. So this is a simply output uh, caching. What it does also is when it knows that it doesn't have the, the the page available in the cache, it will start monitoring every content item which is displayed, and and it's it's extensible, so you can monitor whatever you want, and it will tag the result with content item IDs, and you can also tag the result with whatever tag you want and you intercept it. This way, then if you change a content item, and it knows that something has been cached and tagged with this content item, it will remove the tagged content items by this ID from the cache. Uh, this way it will invalidate the cached entries for each content item it rendered based on what you edited. Uh, okay, that, see, this is very simple. Um, and what I would like to see, and you, it's, you will see it's, it's, um, it's weird, but it will work. Um, is that whenever there is, if, let's imagine output cache is not working anymore. Whenever there is a request, let's um, let's uh, record every content item which is accessed using a get or a get many. Okay, or let's say which is displayed. Okay, it's okay, it will work. So we know that for a page, we know all the content items which have been loaded using get or get many. We could also do it using the records, okay? Let's say which records or which content items have been loaded. And we just record it for each page. What are the, the IDs of the get and get many which are used? Next time we hit the page, the same request, we know, we suppose which IDs will be displayed. Probably they will be the, the, the same content items, okay? Probably. So let's do that. Let's just, okay, we know there is ID one, two, three. Let's do a get many query with one, two, three, okay? And this way, with one query, we've loaded one, two, three. I call it preemptive loading. Is it correct in English? Preemptive loading. Yeah. This way, the next modules which will want to load the one and two and three maybe two times or three times or just one time they do a get 
one. But NI Bernet will already have loaded those items, so there will be no query. Call it predictive. Sorry? Predictive, not preemptive. Okay, predictive. So Nick, you uh, don't know your English. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Let me write it down. Predictive. <laughs> I have to check what's the difference between preemptive and predictive, but maybe you will explain us. Predictive, okay. Yeah, um, uh, preemptive would be that it takes control or something. Okay. Preemptive is like an evasive maneuver. Whereas, uh, uh, predictive would mean that it's just making assumptions about the future. Cool. Um, so, imagine that, that you have a select and plus one case, and there is nothing to do with that, like the the term content item, which is two layers down the query, and it's very hard to to optimize it even with a projection and inger flutter. So this way, let's say you display lots of products and lots of terms, and it does a select and plus one, but it knows that when you go to this product page, it will load the terms number one, two, three, four, five every time. And during a select and plus one, a select and plus one is actually a, a single query just for an ID done many times. So with that in mind, it will just, okay, let's load all these items from this table with IDs number one, two, three, four, five. And same thing for a select and plus one, there will be no more select and plus one. There will just be a one select to get all the terms, whatever number there is. And it will be pretty quick. And the advantage um, to cache is that there is no stale data because the data is really the live data from the database. If we just loaded it efficiently in hope that it might um, improve the, 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 the process of the current page. And even if you have new data which have to be displayed, it's okay, we have preloaded some stuff, but it doesn't prevent you from loading some new stuff. So if there is a new term which will be loaded in, in a select and plus one, it will be loaded in select and plus one. And uh, the cache entry of the, the predictive IDs will be, will be updated. So um, this is not syscache, this is not output cache, this is predictive cache. Uh, okay. Uh, does it make sense? <laughs> Nick is so much thinking. <laughs> do you see the advantage? Yeah. So I do, uh, but... open a website, enable the mini profiler, and you will see all those red lines saying duplicate. When you see duplicate, it means the same query goes over and over again with different IDs. So this way, what it will do is it will detect the duplicate somehow and just, oh, instead of doing 10 duplicates, let's do one query with uh, all the IDs we already know about. Okay? And then when the query will be started by an Ibernate, it will say, oh, I don't need to create this query. I just have the, 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 the thing in memory. You need to be used to using ORMs to understand that maybe. Sultan, does it make sense? Uh, yeah, actually, I was thinking about uh, such a such a mechanism myself, but I haven't tried it. So uh, I'm happy that it should work. It should. Uh... Oh, it will work. I'm just yeah. Hmm. Just something about it just doesn't sound quite right. It it is right. Okay. And and there is no drawback to it. Meaning, for instance, if you use output caching or syscache, there are always some stale issues with that. Here, there is no question of stale. It will be loaded. It's just loaded with a, well, optim an optimized way. Let's try that. Zoltan will try that. It's okay. You have, you have time. He has time. Lots of times. Um, um, yeah, just need to, I, you don't, I'm not sure you, have, you even have to change the default um, content manager for that. You can intercept that like I do in the output cache. And uh, before the action is executed, just load them. And let's see what it does with that. Um, the only thing is that you might want to change the default content manager because the get many could be not removed, but could use a get with this module. Because this, if you do a get many, in the end, it won't get the identity map. Well, we have we can uh, talk about this uh, offline if someone is interested. It's okay, we'll see. Um, it should work. 
predictive caching. That's better. Guys, you are all wrong. Preemptive means to be possible. Preemptive is good. It's preemptive predictive caching. Maybe both of them. It's like machine learning in Orchard, eh? It's not machine learning. Uh, well, if machine learning is just, oh, last time you asked me for chocolate, you also gave me uh, some bread. So next time, don't ask don't ask for bread. You already know there is bread with the chocolate. Yeah, that's, exactly. That, that's it. That's it. Chris. Update. Chris. Hello. I can see some noise on the phone icon, but I don't hear anything. Okay, this might not oh, be working then. Good, thank you. Hi, Chris. Oh, hello. So, do you have some news on the on the website? Yeah, I was just about to go. Um, anyways, we have a uh, we have a wireframe that we've made. Uh, it's just the home page, and so we've been making some progress on that. I don't, I didn't know if uh, the designers wanted me to post it up yet, <laughs> but um, don't tell him. I've looked at it. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> it's looking pretty good, but um, I'll get the okay on that and post it up later today, and the thread, and uh, we'll be able to get people's input on it. Good. Sweet. Let's That's make him try. It. No, uh, no design yet. It's just black and white. It's a him or she. She. So we can't make her cry. Oh, that's so sad. <laughs> you can try. Yeah, no, but I'm sure I can. I can do that. I've done it a lot of time. Uh, but I try to refrain myself now. Uh, okay, we'll see. I I ask someone else to to say what I think, and uh, they will say. It. <laughs> Nicely. <laughs> yeah, there's some content on it that's obviously placeholder. We'll need to figure out what will go there, but uh, that's up to okay. Good. That's up to uh, the folks here. At, at least it's something we can we we have to talk about. So it's good. We, it can it, it will make the, the the conversation the discussion to to go. On. Good. Thank you. And Zoltan, I assume you have already finished the website. <laughs> Uh, we can just start after the design is ready. Okay, Sorry. okay, yeah, good. It's okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Good, good. Um, so some new website I will share with you. Unless someone wants to add something. Antoine, score, please. And let me up. I'm sure there is a way in Chrome to open lots of uh, websites. How do I do that? Does anyone know? Uh, you could you could collect them into a, a folder in uh, in the bookmarks and then uh, then click with the scroller. Let me click on the links. <laughs> Do we have the the one from uh, Nick? Uh, APA today. That's the one. Is there? We we didn't show up last. Uh, uh, we didn't show it last week because we were not there. So we are waiting for you. And okay. we we're sharing a new one here. Um, honesty for breakfast. <laughs> I I like the typography better. Something, some discussions I have with uh, Stanley about that. You are making new website every day, uh, Stanley. Stop it. Okay, this one is 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 check website. I don't know about what. I don't read check. Um, Licia seems to be an Italian website about some cosmetics or something like that. Very nice. The one page stuff. They copied the Orchard Harvest design. They just changed the buildings by faces. 
Where's the Ali? Where's the uh, Ali quote? The Muhammad Ali quote is that on there? What? The Muhammad Ali quote that was on the Harvest website. Yeah, it, it? it's. I think it's still on the Harvest <laughs> website. They don't have the. They don't have the Ali quote. No, they should. Um. So this one is yours. So this one is the one that uh, Nick works on. Lots of content. Very nice. Very neat. Very Do clean. You, are you showing it? Do you oh yeah, that's it. Yeah. Pretty cool. It's, it's readable, you know. I can read. It. Um, you, yeah. You'd love it, um, Sultan. It's all projections. All the home pages are uh, just all projections. Don't, don't don't tell me anything about the implementation because I I will not sleep after. That's all projections as well. Uh, lots of projections. It's scary. So we need to optimize yeah. the projections then, I should. Yeah, a little bit. I have some ideas. I have some ideas. Sultan, if you want. This is um, running 1.7. So okay. not not 1.7.1 uh, .1 or 1.7.2, but yeah, 1.7. Or 1.8. Or 1.8, no. Uh, Damovo, uh, lots of content. What is that? UK website. I don't know if it's well known. What do they do? Critical, highly secure communication environments. Okay. The Soldiers Project Sacramento and Greater Placer Quentin. Yep. <coughs> Help veterans and things like that. Uh, Bingo Gods. Who is this website from? I think it's on the, someone on the list. Last week you said don't show it. Because it's public, I'm just showing it. I, don't, I can't remember if it was uh, Vantajou or Vanbury. Nope. Someone from the from the Jabber list. Um, yeah, it looks like I should not show this page to my wife, or she will just play everything here. Uh, this one, enterprise.com. Nice, simple, nice. Bootstrap, obviously. Another Italian website. Don't understand Italian. Ci siamo, salvisi. And this one from Stanley. It's always about dating and sex when Stanley make, makes a website. I don't write the content. Yeah, 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 you say that. With <laughs> gifts. <laughs> it's Ricky Steiner who wrote it. Maybe it's a fake account. They'll just make it. No, it's a real person. <laughs> Miriam Lemping, a real person too? I promise. <laughs> Ricky Steiner loves animated GIFs. Okay, good. Um, Treasuring. I will close these ones and keep the last one because I don't think I have it in my list. Triaging. We have one rating, but a beautiful rating. We don't have so much rating on the previous uh, 171 user uh, issues. So propose, um, let just to show the status. So 17x is still active. I moved everything to 172, which was closed. Uh, now 170, so it's still active. And if we look at high, I already have some high impact changes. They are not that high sometimes. It's just that, yes, we have to fix it for next version, definitely. OK, it, we can't release what release next version without it. Uh, for instance, a breaking change with the shift in tag views. The, um, so the shift changed, shifted the tags, the tags, and it's a breaking change for the views. I will try to change it so there is no breaking change. Otherwise, most of the themes will be um, um, broken by this change. Um, problems with edit placement from admin. There is a patch. Just apply it. This one also, I. I want to fix it because I agree it's a, it's a big issue. If you ever try to overwrite a zone, 
um, the placement is a more the, the order is no more used for the shape for the sub shapes of the zones because actually this ordered hack is a shape which is wrapping all the other shapes and ordering them it's not public you can't reuse it so i remember like a few months ago I, I did a website and i had to copy paste the code from this shape into the view just to order the things in the view so the suggestion here is to make it public to be able to reuse it when you override the zone why not i have another solution with another suggestion with if, if it works is to embed this behavior in a zone shape so when you have a zone shape and you just render it it orders it directly. I'm not sure it would work, so at least we can make this um, method public. Um, VS2030, yes, this is a broken um, IntelliSense, and yeah, so, but we have a pull request for that. Uh, yeah, thank you. Antoine always has the answers to stupid things. Doesn't mean that he does stupid stuff means when we have a question we don't know the answer he knows it <laughs> Sean Tag, we are gaining traction with our chart size we have two new fortune size. yes doesn't make me richer maybe it makes you richer i hope so or less poor best blog post this week yes also yeah oh yeah this nice blog post i retweeted it if you're if you're a not chat committee member you must have uh, had all these uh, ideas like felt disappointed that your issue had been postponed to or chat feature version <laughs> so this is special dedicated to to uh, to christian okay sorry yeah, yeah but you are part of the community everyone knows that uh oh that that was one about me wondered if sebastian was serious or not and remember that he's never serious yeah um and one about lombic too where, where was the one about lombic uh, uh, I had an idea for him. Were you? Yeah. And realized that Lombic had already done it. True. True. I had an idea of a blog post and realized that David Hayden has already written about it. True. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, very, it's very nice. If you haven't read it, do that. Maintain a OneNote with about 50 tabs of IDs to enhance the project. I do have, I don't know about you, but I do. It's very nice. And Bertrand, what, what? There, there were some bad words about Bertrand. Loved seeing how Bertrand sometimes answered to people that forgot the simplest rules of court. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, you suck. Uh, I'm just helping you, sorry. <laughs> Next time I won't help you. I won't suck. <laughs> okay, good. That, that's a very nice list. Um, and it's on our channel, so that's bonus point. How well content types, part, fill storage, I will see migration shapes. Uh, that, that's so nice. I had one of these on channel moments. Uh, I like it. I will make a poster. How do you go about identifying our chant websites? If you want to know if one website is on our chant, it's easy. You just, but I'm sure that's not the question. Uh, you just go this way and view source. And we render by default the our chart generator. We don't render any, yes, this, 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 this. Where? Here. There is this tag included by default by a module. We don't render the, the version number um, for security reasons. If you are um, smart, you might guess the version number based on the jQuery version that is used. <laughs> because each version of jQuery, no, oh, there is no jQuery on this website. Cool, for security reasons. If you want to know all the websites which that Orchard runs, um, Nick, do you recall the, the website which does that? The meta search engine. Ah. Meta search, meta. There's a, there's a search engine where you can put some. Uh, 
I don't remember which one. You just say, oh, which contains the meta generator or chard, and it will give you the list of, of them. By default, it gives you the 21st for free. You have to pay for the other ones. I never paid. I'm, uh, I'm in. Um, okay, so go back to um, triaging. So proposed for all version. Active proposed all here. I'm starting with the the old ones, Mendek. Yes, that would be great because okay, there June. there are some really old ones. Yeah, that's right. June. Some uh, someday we should start with the ones in the middle because we we never do the middle ones. Um, okay, adoption to prepend to markdown resizer. What does it mean? Nick? It's proposed for future, so to be discussed, actually. I don't know what it means, but... Oh, sorry, sorry, I was on mute. We, um, I was trying to say something. Add prepend to um, Markdown Resizer. Uh, I can't remember. Good. So we have to talk about that. So if it's for future, it means we have already talked about it and we'll do it maybe for in future release. Um, propose period in July. Location of workflows activities should be measured in relative coordinates. Um, okay, I trust you. Might be an issue. It's not high on the stack, but okay. Problem with MIME types not seen even when installing IS. The web config should be updated by default. One load and we have one type types installed. <laughs> Closed and reop reopened by someone on a proposed. Okay, okay, I see if I application to have a, to update with config, but the message is not very explicit. Oh, there is a work item, I didn't see that. Media upgrade can be started if files with PDF extensions are present. Unknown mime type. Okay, so this is to upgrade. Okay, what is the issue problem with mime type not seen? <coughs> so I, I assume it means okay, I see thanks, means close. I don't see the issue here. I don't see what the issue is. It says closed by Bertrand. So yes, but, but it's it. proposed. So <clears throat> Okay, I close it, Christian. If you have more information, update it. Non element name for non element name for include app config should be content. Um, I think this has been fixed. Yeah, the oh, build wouldn't be package stage. I think the build would have broken if this was. Uh, yeah, I think I, I have fixed those 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 elements uh, closed. Country Pro fixed. Let's say fixed. Uh, fixed. If fixed um, in one seven two. Duplicate part name and creation by Vice and the hardware proposed improvements. The handling of the part name when creating a new part with UI triggers and exception. Oops, some things. Yes, this is something nice. This other one.
Mm. Okay, so first thing is, uh, so if there is a conflict, we should prevent it, not to create any part which is already existing or has a content type with the same name which is wrong because we have parts maybe with the same content name. I also propose to force all parts created by the UI to end with part. Avoiding any collision with a content type name, necessitating an implicit part with the same. What do you think about having part added automatically? I don't like to have it automatically added because then users can force it if they want to. We might. Mm. I do like the convention of having the word part at the end. It's a convention, but do we have to force the convention here for users? I had the impression bad things happen if it didn't, end, if it didn't end in the word part. Sorry? I had the impression bad things happened if it didn't end in the name part. Continually with some parts name not ending, I suggest doing a special star marker on the end. Ah, that's too complex. <laughs> oh. So, okay, with um, conflict validation. part automatically um, has to be discussed. So I say active for 17x so we can uh, stay any page. So we can, okay, submit. So we can change the validation because we, we need not to have uh, exceptions running. Uh, but adding parts, not really okay. We can still have it open to, to talk about it. Ah. Cut flex. Come back. Is it just me? It's not working for me either. No, it's dead for me. Got plex is down. Hey, maybe they are starting it because uh, this is about the time to restart the complex. 108. Yeah. So this was a nice meeting, nice triage. Um, <laughs> any question before we end the meeting on, on this note? So what are you talking about? Hey Sebastian, this is Sean. Yeah, we were just chatting about the idea of how some technology platforms have um, certified partners or developers. Um, and so as Orchard continues to grow, um, we're seeing a lot of interest in Orchard, um, but not enough demand to fill it. And, and that's a good problem to have. Um, and so I was asking the group if there was any idea or concept of having um, consulting services or a consulting group to take on that demand. So when you say not enough demand, you mean there are some developers who don't find contracts or some contractors who don't find developers? Yeah, uh, contracts that don't find developers. Uh, okay. so yeah, this is what I thought also. Um, there's a forum group that we have where people can post job, jobs offers. 
Uh, know what we can do. On the website, Chris suggested, no, I think we suggested that uh, we will have a section on the website where uh, companies could uh, say that they provide services around Orchard. So consulting companies like Lombic, like uh, all the user ones, I don't know your company name. Um, yeah, I think there's value in that. And it's it's, it's almost the sense of building a community. Uh, the idea that um, Orchard is certainly growing and making some wonderful strides. And um, if, if we look at some of the really big some big platforms out there, they, they try to connect those parties together. And it's not something that, I mean, certainly it's not that, like in our case, um, for some of our clients, it's not that they're looking for developers, they're looking for orchard consultants and that expertise. Um, and so perhaps there might be value in connecting those parties. Yeah, I, I read a tweet, <laughs> which was from 2010, and the guy was saying, Oh, uh, does it mean that in four years we will all be Orchard consultants? When they saw that Microsoft, uh, when it was SharePoint consultant, when they, when they saw that Microsoft was starting a new CMS, um, I hope, I hope, but that yeah, that you don't need to you don't need consultants to make Orchard websites when you are a company. That is my but I might be wrong. You you. you yeah, no, but I, but exactly I understand right. the point. I understand. Okay, so what can we do? A website? A separate website? How, how can we relate everyone? Or how can a developer say, I'm available, I can do that? Or here is a marketplace for consultants and, and people looking for consultants? Yeah, we, we could help provide maybe some some content for you, Sebastian, or some kind of services to help you guys set that up. And it's not it's not something where it's not self-serving, where it would be for, for us in so much as something to help build a greater community. Um, we've got more orchard business than we can take on. And so, but but I know that you guys are engaged in building the core platform. You, you guys want to stay focused on orchard. It's just, it's just me. It's just me. All the other ones, they are just engaged to make business. Oh, well, I mean, in that case, <laughs> <laughs> so that's what you mean by everyone makes money but you. Well, I mean, you know, so, so that's an opportunity. I mean, if if people ever feel maybe underutilized or that mm -hmm. they could take on more work, how do we take, because we're really good at marketing. I'm not. I'm, I'm a developer, but the company I work for is very good at marketing. And, and Orchard does some things that are really special that really no one else can do in the marketplace. Very bad for me, at least. Um, I think, yeah, um, I'm, uh, sorry. How do you guys find some customers? So we are traditionally a um, and yeah. Uh, when I say you, company. yes, you. But I mean the other guys, the other independent developers, oh, because yeah. yeah. Because yes, you you create your own solution, so that's maybe different. Like Stanley is an employee of his company and makes also websites for his company. But there are lots of uh, um, consultants or freelance developers on the on the meeting right now. I'm sure we'll look for for maybe they don't look for contracts because they have too many. Look at Lombic; there are already 15, 16 in the company. This just started two months ago. I don't know. <laughs> they have a security. They have a security expert. At, wow. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, how do you find your, your contracts, your customers? They just they, co they come to me. They come to you <laughs> because they just you're appear not... out of thin air. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, because yeah, the issue is that I see is that so um, companies will need to find consultants, developers, and not on. They somehow needs a. They will somehow need a directory. Okay. Oh. But then there is the notion of reputation, and it's it's like everyone is doing on the web with this Odesk thing and all these freelancer, uh, .co, all these websites trying to to make the connections between the the, the freelancer the developers and the, these customers. Uh, I I I don't know. I'm sure we can do something, but I don't know what to do right now. If it's not redoing something that is already done on the web, 
or maybe we can point to these solutions and have every, or yes have all the customers go to these websites and all the, the developers go to this same website and just register on them too yeah because that's not the goal of actually this website to do that yeah, this yeah maybe or so but yeah not directly I'm not sure what we can do and usually Elon knows everything but he's no more here <laughs> okay well yeah it's just an idea I appreciate everyone thinking about it maybe it's something where um, I'll think about it too how we can make it be a good fit yes do, do we need just a page on our website to point people to somewhere or do we need do we need a specific Orchard website with a directory of contractors and that people can ping? Yeah, maybe a separate website because I really like the, the grassroots feel of Orchard. You know, when you go there, you feel like that anyone can contribute and uh, and, and have a um, influence on the project, and I think that's really successful. So maybe maybe it wouldn't be good on the Orchard site because we don't want it to feel corporate. Yeah, maybe on the website reference all the ways you can find a consultant and this website will be a solution i saw a tweet last week where nick and bertrand were uh, cc'd about a, a solution where you have an online presence and people just ping you and what is this website nick um, it's called AirPair. I, I need to get back to the guy about that but um yeah, if anyone wants that then please take it i, I found it interesting also yeah it's got, it's actually done by a guy called um jonathan kresner the CEO of it, you may he was on Orchard on the early days. That means something to me, Jonathan Kresner. Yeah, it was, uh, interesting. He did the uh, Climb Find website. Okay. In Orchard, um, which is pretty big. Oh, he's the guy. It's the guy who um, was not complaining, but always saying, "Oh, I need that, that, and that." You know, you remember? Yeah. Yeah, lots of suggestions. Guy, yeah. So this, like, yeah, like yeah. put taxonomies in core. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah, but we did. So <laughs> you kind of got that right. <laughs> no, I mean he was right. He was complaining, but he was right. Yeah. I remember this guy. Yeah. Nice so guy. yeah, did, 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 and what is the website? I, uh, um, it's Air Pair. Uh, Air Pair. You, have, you have a UK accent. I don't understand. Her, 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 her. Yeah, this thing, or you just say, oh, find an Orchard developer and... Where is Orchard? Orchard. 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 I don't know. I find this site a little bit cumbersome, but um, it's, yeah. Problem it's nice. Two. Orchard. Where is Orchard? Probably under .NET at the top. I, I don't yeah, know. There should be a search engine. Orchard. Get unstuck. Yeah, something like that, a platform like that, where yeah, you could find yeah. people. This this is a solution. It's not the solution, but a solution. Orchard, orchard, orchard. I'm I'm working on my orchard accent. <laughs> exactly, you don't pronounce the R's. That's weird. Orchard, orchard, or orchard. No, no. It's funny. It's funny that you say it's weird not to pronounce the R's. And and you know what? I I don't even ask Bertrand because he wouldn't be of any help. It's not Orchard. <laughs> orchard. 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 Yeah, orchard. you're not from you're not from south southwest Somerset. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Okay, so that we are um, diverging. So it was a nice meeting. Thank you guys. We had a nice uh, triaging. Thanks to Benedek. We triaged three bugs. <laughs> It's not me, it's Godplex. We'll do it better next week. Cool. Okay. See you next week, guys. See you guys. Bye. If you want to uh, chat more on some specific subjects we uh, talked about this week, just ping me. You know where. Everywhere. I'm everywhere. Ping me. Sick. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye, bye. Bye, bye everyone.